Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have an underwater GPS? Something that you could take with you on your dive, even into a wreck. Or what about underwater maps? The tech isn't here yet, but let's see what we can do with a small budget. I'm using a basic Telstra smartphone, a ZTE Blade A462. I picked this up second hand for $50 in near new condition. I'm using this cheap phone so that if it floods, I won't cry. Next I had a look at the range of Dolphin Box waterproof cases. Whitworth Marines had one of these on special for $20. It's rated for 25 meters, but I've had it past 30 meters without a problem. I added some foam to the case to hold the phone in position. Now for some apps. The first app that I'm going to look at is the simple GPS coordinates. Install this app. It's pretty easy to use. Guess your age. I've knocked a few years off mine. Allow GPS access and then wait until you get a GPS signal. I'd also recommend the No Lock app. This makes it so you don't have to swipe your phone open, which is hard to do underwater. Just press Disable. The other app I'd recommend is the Keep Screen On. Without it, the simple GPS coordinate app won't keep updating your GPS position when the screen is off. Tick the box and the screen will never turn off. You can turn down the brightness of your screen if you need. So let's do it. I'll turn on this very basic phone. You can see I already had the screen lock disabled using the no lock app. Now to enable the keep screen on and fire up the simple GPS coordinates and wait for a GPS signal. I'd recommend flight mode, especially if you've got a SIM card in the phone. You don't need access to the mobile phone network to use the GPS. Let's open the Dolphin Box waterproof case and place the phone in it. I've got a frame made out of foam and some padding as well to keep the phone in position. Just slip the phone in and make sure you've got a GPS signal before stowing it. Now the GPS position you saw is where I'm currently parked in Queenscliff. This area has now been redeveloped. But at the time, I was parked here in the corner. And the charter boats would come and pick you up on the jetty, just here. I'm diving the J4 submarine and I've filmed the coordinates inside the sub because it's nice and dark. This is not the position of the sub, but it's where I entered the water and lost my GPS signal. The GPS app holds the last known coordinates before losing signal underwater. Obviously you need a camera or a slate to record this location. I've checked my location against the known GPS coordinates of the J4 sub and it shows me south of the sub, just as predicted. Here is another example where I'm diving the rip bank. This GPS position is where I entered the water. I can check the position anytime during my dive as it won't update until I surface. I've tracked our boat ride and I'm playing it back in Google Earth. As we play the path back, there's random loops. This is the boat's movements as recorded by the app. So it probably doesn't make sense until I turn on the sonar overlay. You can see the boat traveling over the edge of the wall. The boat heads up current where they'll drop the divers in. The pin on the map was my entry GPS mark from the underwater GPS app. We then swam along the wall and popped up onto the shallow bank and then made our ascent. 
where the boat picked up all the divers. You could also deploy the GPS unit with an SMB to take it to the service. But you'd have to wait a minute or two to allow the unit to obtain a GPS signal before pulling it back down. Alternatively, if it's shallow enough, you could just surface and take a mark. You could also tow it behind you and track your route. We'll have a look at tracking next. I'm using this Navionic app that I brought a while ago and I love it. To use this app, fire it up. You don't need the SIM card or internet access. Just press start and that's it. It will start tracking. The screen doesn't have to be on for this app. Put it in the case and put it in your pocket. Clip it off to your BCD and at the end of the day, just press stop. Now go and enjoy a dive. You don't have to look at the unit while diving. It will record until you press stop. This is the Lone Star Wall, a very good dive. As you can see, there's nothing to look at while diving. But this time, when you replay the track, you're looking for a straight line segment. This is where you entered the water and your signal was lost. Then the straight line is drawn between where you entered the water and where you exited. This is obviously not the path you swam underwater, merely the entry and exit points. You can drop a pin at the start and end points, then inquire what the GPS location is. Now for something a little simpler. If you've got a GoPro Hero 5 or greater, just turn on the GPS a little while before going diving. You need to allow time for your GoPro to get a GPS signal. I'd suggest turning the GoPro on a few minutes before the dive to allow it to get a GPS signal. Then start recording before you leave the boat. You want to record your GPS location before entering the water. Complete your dive and when you hop back on board, wait a few minutes before stopping the recording. You want to obtain a GPS signal once again so that you can determine where you came out of the water. I think I turned the GoPro off too quickly here. I didn't give it enough time to get a signal. So I turned it back on as soon as I could and let it record for a few more minutes. Next, download your footage and then go to the Taylor and Wayne website. Use the free telemetry extractor. Select GPS long lat and I got the best results using 3D and the highest GPS precision. Click on the KLM and either save the file or open it in Google Earth. If you use the play feature in Google Earth, you can follow the tracking data before you enter the water. There's a difference in location of approximately eight meters between the phone GPS and the GoPro's GPS but that's close enough for me and what I need. If you keep playing the track, it goes wacky. This is basically when you're underwater and the GoPro loses the GPS signal. So if you have a look at the sonar chart, you can see where we entered and then swam along the wall. Now let's have a look at our exit. We got an error, so I'm trying Microsoft Edge. It works okay, but makes no sense. There's no valid GPS data. Now to open the file where I turn the camera back on and let it run for a little while after getting back on board the boat. We have success this time, we've recorded GPS data. Now because I turned the camera off too soon after exiting the water and then there was a delay in me starting the recording again, this time there's an approximate 50 meters gap between the GoPro and the phone GPS. This wouldn't have been a problem if I just let the GoPro record for a few minutes after exiting the water. So what's the use of this tool? Is it to find all the dive sites that charter boats go to? No, all the popular dive sites are already freely available online. You can download these from the Scuba Doctor's website. The main reason I've shown you this tech on charter boats is that I don't really want to show you the GPS data of my private dive sites. 
I've found several beautiful spots doing some shore dives and I want to record their GPS locations so I can take other people back to this spot. The other useful aspect is that you could use this phone if you get into trouble. Most areas I dive in already have mobile phone coverage. Now I know it's crude and it may not be a perfect solution, but it's better than having nothing at all. If you do more high risk diving, you should consider the Nautilus as an emergency device. Although I like the older version that had the CB radio built into it. Anyway, I hope this information provides an insight into what you can do with the present tech available that will help you pinpoint your ideal dive sites.